Welcome to the Application Programming Interface Overview presented by Oregon State Police in Diverse Computing. In today's agenda, we will provide you with an overview of what the FIX Replacement Project is and the ultimate goals of this presentation. Later, we'll be discussing how to submit a transaction under the new FIX application, and we'll also provide you details about the new Gun Dealer API and include an API technical overview. Lastly, we'll close with some final important notes. The first part of our introduction is to discuss the FIX System Replacement Project. OSP is replacing the current Firearms Instant Check System application as part of a larger IT replacement project. The FIX system is what is used by OSP to conduct background checks when requested by gun dealers or private parties for firearm transfers as required by law. The project also replaces the current gun dealer portal that you all use to make a request to OSP for a firearm transfer background check. During the initial stages of building the new system, it was discovered that some Oregon gun dealers are or may be using a software interface created by themselves or a third party on their behalf to submit background checks to the OSP FIX gun dealer portal. These interface applications may make it easier for a gun dealer to submit their request information to OSP without having to manually enter the information into the OSP website format. However, any such application in use when the new FIX application and gun dealer portal are implemented will fail and cause those gun dealers to be significantly impacted. OSP recognizes the potential benefit this sort of application provides to gun dealers and immediately began seeking information about who and how many dealers this may involve. Next, we'd like to talk about the goal of this API presentation. The reason for these efforts and today's presentation is to ensure gun dealers are not impacted when the new fix application and gun dealer portal are implemented in June 2022. OSP and DCI have partnered to provide information early on so our customers can address this issue and learn about the new API tool being designed to allow for a dealer's continued use of an interface product as provided by OSP that will ensure both data security and data integrity are maintained. This presentation is designed to go over the API tool that will directly integrate with the new FIX system gun dealer portal for those dealers electing to do so. While just how many dealers may be using their own interface currently is unknown, we recognize that many of you attending today's presentation either one, may not be sure if you use an interface currently or not, or two, may have already determined that you are not in this category. Either way, you are all welcome to stay tuned to this session if you want to learn more about the API. But please know that if you will continue to connect and submit your fixed background checks directly through the OSP gun dealer portal or via telephone with our staff, and you do not currently use an interface, you will not be impacted by the implementation of our new FIX system. And lastly, we'd like to discuss some upcoming changes and important dates in our timeline. As mentioned, implementation of the new FIX system is scheduled for June 2022. The design of the new FIX system and gun dealer portal is currently underway and OSP would like to thank all gun dealers for your ideas and input to date through various surveys we have conducted. As a subset of the overall project, the design work of the new API tool that we are discussing today is taking place now from May through July of 2021. Next, we'll be discussing how to submit a transaction. Currently, there are two ways to submit a transaction with the FIX unit. The first is to make a phone call to the FIX unit directly to process your transactions. The second way is to access the online form in the gun dealer portal to submit a transaction. And lastly, an additional future method is to use the external gun dealer API, which will integrate your internal application with the FIX system. Throughout this presentation, we will be going into further detail and providing you with an overview of what the external API is and how it will be used. Before I get started with explaining what the API is, I'd first like to identify some key terms that you will be hearing throughout this presentation to help you get familiar with what they mean. First, the Gun Dealer Portal is a website where gun dealers and their staff can go to to create different types of transactions, manage existing transactions, and check the status of those transactions. It is also where gun dealers will go to to generate their Gun Dealer API token. 
Second, the Gun Dealer API is a RESTful web-based API that allows third-party applications to perform secure firearm and background checks as mandated by Oregon state law. By using this API, gun dealers can enhance their existing application to electronically submit requests for firearm and background checks without the need to manually key in their transactions in the gun dealer portal. Next, an API token is required to both authenticate and authorize transactions submitted to the gun dealer API. Lastly, the FIX unit is a firearm instant check system unit and they conduct background checks and firearm checks for those attempting to purchase or transfer a firearm through all federally licensed firearm dealers in Oregon. To dive a little bit deeper into what the Gun Dealer API is, I'd first like to present to you a brief overview of this diagram and the definition of an API. An API is an application programming interface, which is a set of definitions and protocols for building and integrating application software. In our case, the Gun Dealer API is a service to allow Gun Dealer's point of sale application to integrate with the FIX system. The Gun Dealer API allows such applications to perform secure background and firearm checks as mandated by Oregon state law. If we take a look at the diagram, we can see three different icons that represent different things. Starting from the left, this icon represents the Gun Dealer retail software or point of sale system located at each Gun Dealer location. In the middle, this icon represents the API, which I previously explained, will allow the gun dealer's point of sale application to integrate with the fixed system. And lastly, on the right, this icon represents the fixed system, where the background checks, firearm checks, and transactions occur. In the diagram, you can see that the API delivers a user request to the fixed system and sends the fixed system's response back to the gun dealer retail software. By using this API, gun dealers can easily electronically submit transactions to the FIX system. In today's presentation, we will be providing you with crucial information in order to get you started with using the Gun Dealer API. We have documented everything we cover in today's presentation within the API specifications document, which will be made available to gun dealers by OSP. This document is a very important tool for gun dealers to learn everything they need to know about the Gun Dealer API. It will provide you with details on topics we will be touching on today, which are how to apply as a gun dealer in the FIX portal, generating the Gun Dealer API token, common practices for using the Gun Dealer API, understanding the required technical specifications, and lastly, viewing detailed references and examples of required data elements. Now that we have a better understanding of what the Gun Dealer API is, we will be moving on with the technical overview for the Gun Dealer API. In this presentation, I will explain some current problems you may be facing with integrating firearm and background checks into your application and how the Gun Dealer API addresses those concerns. We will then go into a discussion of what you can do with the Gun Dealer API, how it's structured, and some key technical concepts you need to know with using the API. We will conclude with a demonstration of how requests are made to the API and what you can expect to get back. A few moments ago, you were provided with an overview of what an API is. Now I would like to explain why you would want to use the API. In the current system, if you wanted to integrate with Oregon Firearm and Background Check System, you would have to do something called screen scraping. This is a process where a program would log into the current website as a dealer and submit a transaction for the dealer. As you are probably aware, this type of integration is fraught with risks and potential issues. First, if the website changes, it can break the integration with your application. When this happens, you must analyze the code, figure out what changed, and make unplanned changes to your application. Second, if any of the data you submit isn't valid, you have no way to easily tell which field is wrong and why. And third, firearm and background checks rely on very specific code values to be sent in. It can take a lot of backwards engineering to determine what the expected values are. A better way to handle integration is through an API. An API is a web service that just deals with data and processes. When you submit through an API, you are not submitting through a website. Instead, you are taking structured data and submitting it to the server to process. 
With the Gun Dealer API, you use a format called JSON to send and receive data. We'll take a look at some sample JSON in a moment. JSON is a popular format for data transfer because it is very concise and there are many high quality libraries to convert JSON data into different formats that they can integrate with your application. Finally, every major language and web framework has libraries for working with data from an API. In Java, C Sharp, Python, and other languages, you will find basic support for making web requests and processing JSON data. Hopefully now you can see the benefits of using an API over other integration options. It is important to note, for the functionality we will be discussing, the API is one option among many for performing stolen firearm and background checks. As we discussed earlier, the existing options for using the gun dealer portal or calling the fixed unit will still be made available. Now let's focus in on exact functionality that the gun dealer API offers. The API methods are divided into two categories, adding transactions and working with transactions. It is important to note that these functions are not specific to the API only, but rather are discussed for the purpose of showing that fixed functions can be done using the new API or using the traditional gun dealer portal. We will go over these in further detail later, but at a high level, there are three types of transactions that can be added via the gun dealer API. The first is a stolen firearm check. The second is a firearm and background check for purchases made at a dealer store. And finally, there is a transaction for a firearm and background check for a private party purchases made through a dealer. When working with transactions created with these endpoints, the Gun Dealer API allows you to add a thumbprint to a transaction and check the status of the transactions. In total, there are five actions that can be performed by the Gun Dealer API. All other dealer actions, such as managing users, viewing and paying invoices, and generating API tokens, must be done from the Gun Dealer portal. One of the great things about the Gun Dealer API is that it has a very expressive validation engine. As you know, the business rules around stolen firearm and background checks are complex. When you use the dealer portal and make a validation error, you get back a message explaining what went wrong and why. The API uses the same validation engine and reports back the same messages as the gun dealer portal. If you submit something to the API that isn't valid, it will return to you a list of human readable validation errors that will allow you to troubleshoot what went wrong and why. For example, if you send the API a list of firearms for the stolen firearm check and the third firearm has a validation error, you will get back in the JSON which firearm had the validation issue and a human readable description of the issue. All the data sent in the API must be valid before it will be processed by the API. And as a developer, you may be wondering if these complex validation rules are documented, in which case they are all included in the API specification document. Now we will review the different types of transactions. The first type of transaction is a stolen firearm check. You can include up to 500 firearms in a collection and a stolen firearm check will be started once it is submitted. In the API terminology, this check is referred to as a gun check. The second type of transaction is a dealer only transaction. This represents a firearm transaction made at a dealer's store. It will perform a stolen firearm check and a buyer background check. For this transaction, the API needs data about the buyer, the firearms being purchased, and a collection of identification information. The third type of transaction is a private party through dealer transaction. This transaction represents two private parties performing a firearm transaction through a dealer's store. It will also perform a stolen firearm check and a buyer background check. It requires the same information as the dealer-only transaction along with additional seller information. Each of these three transactions will return a unique transaction ID. This ID can be used to add a thumbprint image and to check on the status of the transaction. Transaction updates using the API will be the same as using the traditional gun dealer portal. Depending on the background check and the data available to OSP, the responses will continue to vary from automated to manual processing. Once a transaction is submitted, the API returns back a transaction ID that you can use to determine the latest status by using the request transaction status. 
When a transaction is successfully submitted via the Gun Dealer API or the Gun Dealer Portal website, it will first go through an automated transaction check process. If that process can resolve the check, the transaction will be updated within a few minutes of being sent out. If the automated transaction check process can't resolve the transaction, then the check will be resolved manually. Now let's discuss how you would use an API in an application. To call a gun dealer API endpoint from an application, you will construct a HTTP POST request. Different languages and frameworks have their own syntax for setting this up. In general, once you have your POST request object, you will need to set two headers. The first is a content type header. This will be set to application slash JSON for the transaction request and multi-part slash MIME for the add thumbnail request since it involves uploading a file. The second HTTP header you would set is the authorization header. This header will be set to a value of bearer and your API token. This allows the request to be associated with a specific dealer. Once the headers are created, you add a block of JSON to the body of the request that represents the firearms, buyer, and other forms of data needed for a particular transaction. Finally, you send the request to the gun dealer API. The API will first validate the API token, then it will validate the JSON sent in for the request, and if those are valid, it will perform the action. If there is an authorization or validation error, the dealer API will send back a response with a 401 unauthorized or 400 bad request status code along with any error messages. These are standard status codes that your application can look for and handle appropriately. If there are no errors, the API will send back a HTTP response of 200 and return back JSON data in the response. Here is an example of JSON. This JSON represents data for a firearm. There are a few things to note about how the API uses JSON. All single objects need to be surrounded with curly braces. For example, the main request object is surrounded in curly braces since it is a single object. All collection of objects need to be surrounded by square brackets. For example, the gun checks collection requires square brackets even though there is only a single firearm being specified. And lastly, all property names must be surrounded in double quotes and are case sensitive. Requests to the API are secured with the API token that is associated with a dealer. It is included with every request to the API in the authorization header. A request will only be processed if the token is valid. An invalid token will return a response that inform you that the request was unauthorized. The API token is managed via the Gun Dealer Portal. The Gun Dealer Portal also allows you to generate new tokens if you need to do so. Let's walk through a demo of adding a dealer-only transaction via the API. When creating a dealer-only transaction, you will need the name of the salesperson, a collection of firearms to check, details about the buyer, and a collection of identification information. As we can see in the JSON, the data needed for the request is organized in a logical way. For the stolen firearm check, we have the gun checks block. As we have seen before, this block describes the firearms that need to be checked. Next, we have the buyer information block that describes the name, characteristics, and personal data of the buyer. The buyer address section describes the address for the buyer. And finally, the identification information collection describes what forms of identification the buyer provided. With this information, we can submit the dealer-only transaction. This is what the API will return on a successful transaction. The request returned a status code of 200 and in the body provided a transaction ID and status of the transaction. Now let's see how you can use the transaction ID. We can use a transaction ID to get the latest status of the transaction. To check the status, we would construct a simple JSON structure that just has a transaction ID in it. We would then send this to the request transaction status endpoint, and the API will return a JSON structure that shows the transaction ID and the current status. As you can see, this one is in the submitted state. The API can return one of these possible statuses, submitted, approved, in process, pending, denied, or canceled. 
Finally, let's take a look at the validation errors. In this request, we have two problems. The first is that we have an invalid action code for this type of gun. The second issue is that either an OAN or social security number is required. In this case, we have left both null. In the response, we get back a validation exception that has a collection of validation issues. The API lets you know which firearm had an issue and a human readable error message on why the data is not valid. All of the examples we showed you today can be found in the API specification document. This document will always be up to date. And if you need it, please reach out to OSP to request a copy. Now that you understand what the API is and how it is used, you may be interested in applying as a gun dealer API tester to get a first-hand look at how the API will function. OSP and DCI are seeking up to five gun dealers to help DCI test the new API tool. If you are interested in assisting in this way, we ask that you send an email to our project email address. Please allow us 10 to 15 days to respond to your request. OSP will be looking to include as much of a varied sampling of customer types as possible for this test group. Those that are selected to test will be contacted to provide information necessary to participate. Before we move on to close the presentation, here are some common questions gathered from the gun dealers during the live webinar. The first question is, do I have to utilize the gun dealer API? And no, you do not have to utilize the gun dealer API. This technology is available as a tool if you would like to use it. If you are already submitting directly through the gun dealer website, you do not have to change to using the API tool. The next question is, how can I get a copy of the API specification document? To get a copy of the API specification document, contact OSP at leds.2020 at osp.organ.gov. Another question that was asked during the webinar was, is the API token a one-time request or will there be a refresh requirement over time? The API token will be associated to an authorized user account within the gun dealer portal. As long as the user account that generated the token is valid and the password has not expired, the token will also be valid. Optionally, the administrator account will also have the ability to generate a new token if and when needed. The next question is, will there be test endpoints we can use during our integration development? And yes, there will be a test server set up that will be available for use during your integration development. Details regarding the endpoints can be found in the API specification document. And lastly, how can I apply to become a gun dealer API tester? To apply to become a gun dealer API tester, you will need to contact OSP at leds.2020 at osp.organ.gov to request the API connectivity form to begin the process of your application. OSP and DCI would like to extend our appreciation to all of those who joined us in the presentation today. Your questions, comments, and interest in this matter are very important to us. We are looking forward to this application replacement and new functionality that we hope will be beneficial to both our customers and OSP as we strive to make improvements whenever possible. Posted here and on the OSP agency website are contacts relevant to this session and the FIX system replacement project itself.